Uh, and this just sits and does its thing until probably about June. This is the one I'm excited for. Elephant garlic. Good morning, beautiful people. Today is finally the day. This is the last official planting for the garden of 2023. This is the last garlic planting. Uh, we plant in October, uh, and this just sits and does its thing until probably about June next year. We got our shipment from Johnny's yesterday. We have some garlic from Edible Acres that a viewer sent us. And we have our garlic that we will be planting. Um, we're gonna be planting some of our biggest heads of garlic. Um, we're gonna go through this and see how much we have once we get it separated because you break apart the, the heads and get the cloves. and We'll figure out how much we have and then that'll determine how much of ours we plant Got the bed already ready. If you guys saw that video, we're ready. So, uh, the boys are all gonna help me today. We're gonna sit down, separate all this garlic, and then we are going to go plant it. Probably won't take very long with five people, five and a half people planting garlic, but that's what we're doing. So let's, uh, let's grab some bowls, and we gotta keep this separate. I'm talking to the room here. Keep it all separate so we can label it. Uh, so the lady that is keeping track of uh, where the garlic is planted and what rows and all that uh, can write it down. So, let's grab some bowls. Here, can you rip this apart? Rip that apart. There's only like four or five heads in there. So this is the uh, Johnny's Music variety. It's a stiff neck. We are planting stiff neck garlic this year because we really missed having the garlic scapes this summer. We like to take the garlic scapes and we harvest those. It's like a secondary harvest on your uh, garlic. You get to eat the garlic, you know, the garlic cloves and the flower heads, the scapes. Uh, what we did last year was we made garlic scape pesto and mm, it was amazing. And we, we missed that this summer. So we're planning for next summer. That's all right, they'll be fine. As long as they don't get damaged. That hard neck sample I'm gonna plant some regardless. Okay. That is a big garlic clove. These are beautiful. Alright, I am not going to weigh all of this. Um, the elephant garlic, well, these are huge. Um, I mean that's that's a big old clove right there. We've got 18 cloves of that. So that'll be most of a row. Um, the, it just, uh, the Edible Acres, it just says Hardneck. Um, I would have to go watch one of his videos. I'm pretty sure he says what variety their Hardneck is. And then the music. That was two pounds. It was two pounds? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would say we probably have like about two pounds of Edible Acres garlic, two pounds of Johnny's, and then I would say we're probably doing maybe a pound of our garlic. So, we're gonna head out there and get planting. I got my garlic. You got your garlic? Okay, don't fall. All right, got a mess of garlic. We're down here at our, our garlic bed for the year. We heavily mulched it. It is ready for garlic. All we're gonna do is just pull the mulch aside, stick the garlic in, and really just walk away. Couldn't get much easier. Meg wants at least like a steak or something telling what rows are what because it is kind of nice you know in a year we're gonna or at least nine months we're gonna look out and be like yeah but what variety is that because that variety is doing really good so we'll see what we can do all right let's get planting okay uh try to space these out before you plant them how far apart do the elephant garlic about i don't know Space them evenly on this row. Yeah, Brett, just do it like that. No, closer together, I think. Try like a foot, foot and a half. Dad, did I? Brett, you 
drop them. Drop them where they go. Yeah, plant them right where they're laid out. Alright, thank you guys for your participation. We all benefit from this crop. Uh, this is probably the one crop that uh, everybody in the house eats. Uh, you know, if there's like colds going through the house, Tyler straight up goes and eats whole garlic cloves. Uh, it's... I do too. Oh, you do too? I believe it when I see it. Usually it's too spicy. Now that the hay, you can't see it from this vantage point, but it's kind of messed up and fluffed up i'll wait until we see sprouts and then i can go level the hay uh, i'm probably going to come in here with the leaf blower at some point and blow all the leaves from all these trees and just blow them onto this bed and that can be further mulching that's easy mode instead of cleaning up the leaves and bagging them i can just blow them down the hill and park them in this bed uh, last year i took all of the leaves from these trees which was a bunch uh, ran them through the wood chipper, the shredder, and then piled them on this bed and the bed where the kakuzis are. And there's really, you cannot tell, there's uh, leaves anymore. All it did was break down into this beautiful, beautiful loamy soil. And uh, these blueberries love it. The strawberries love it. Everything that's been in here has loved it. All right. That's it. Thank you guys. That's it on fall planting. All right, so some time has passed. It's gonna be kind of a fun evening for me because uh -huh. I'm cooking dinner tonight. That makes it fun for me too. All right, let me, uh, let me dig them up. We got a bunch. This is the last harvest out of the garden. We, have, we harvested all of our poblanos. I'm gonna go through all of these and pick the best green ones. Eh, probably some red ones too. I think I want a red one. Okay. We are having chili riano. Chili riano is one of our favorite dishes. You basically take a poblano, an ancho if you want to call it that. Um, you take them, scoop the seeds out, you roast them first, peel the skin, mm -hmm. cut them open, take the seeds out, stuff them with cheese, we bread them and fry them. Yes. And it's delicious. Yes. Apparently there's like a what, the original way to make them? Yes. Fried in egg yolks or something? Egg white. Egg whites? Yes. Yeah, no. There was a restaurant by where we lived in California that served them the way we are making them, and this is the way we like them. Yeah, so. it's, a, it's a cornmeal uh, breading. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty good. I like a big, thick breading surrounding my cheese-filled pepper. Yeah. Like, if it seals up and fries <laughs> crispy enough to seal the cheese in, mm -hmm. you're doing it. Right. Good stuff. So, I'm gonna go through these, find the best candidates, and get them roasted. Cool. Corbin, can you go get me the blowtorch? Yeah. I'm gonna do some reds. Yeah, do you want a red? Uh, I don't know. Not sure if the reds will be spicier. Not necessarily. That one's out. One, two, three, four, five. That one's a good one. Six. And let's see, that's a good one. They're all pretty even in size. Like, this is great. I'm going to go get sweet peppers for myself. And then there's some okra in here. Uh, you can kind of tell how we picked the other day. Uh, we uh, walked through the garden, picked all of these because we knew frost was coming. Uh, and made our way to the okra and picked a whole bunch of okra too. Probably what these are destined for is, what are we doing with the red ones? Um, just we might just dry, dry them, them too. too. Yeah. So, so I'll probably dry those whole, so we have them for like Mexican dishes. Have them as an ancho. Yeah. Like if you buy anchos in the uh, Hispanic section at the store, you'll see these great big dried peppers. Uh, that's, that's these right here. They pack a lot of flavor. Uh, if you're trying to spice something up, they're not too spicy. They have a real good flavor. Uh, and then the green ones, 
This is what we love about the green ones. Oh, yes. So, was it last year, year before you did it? Last year. Last year, she took all of our green ones, dried them, and ground them into powder, and she makes our own seasoning. She calls it green stuff. <laughs> Actually, we only have a little bit left. Uh, basically, it's just dried, ground uh, poblanos, green poblanos, so you get that green chili flavor. Uh, and then she adds, what, like salt and garlic? And salt and garlic powder. That's it. And uh, if you've ever had like hatch chili seasoning, that's kind of what it reminds yeah. me of. Uh, it's really stinking good. It adds a lot of flavor. It's like bomb on eggs. Oh, it's bomb on eggs. So it is so eggs. good. <laughs> Buggy, did you find you a, a uh, yeah. pepper? pepper? Oh, that's perfect. All right, I'm going to roast all these peppers so I can skin them. I'm going to, you know, get them to sweat once I roast them. This plate fits real nice and tight on this bowl. Set that right there. When I roast these, I just burn them until they're black all over. So I'm going to wash these first. Some of them have some dirt on them. All right. Now I'm going to throw it in this bowl, cover it up, and see how it's steaming? That will actually sweat the skin, making it quite easy to peel. All right, I'm gonna let these steam just a little bit longer, and then I'm going to take them over to the sink. The steaming actually helps them soften a little bit, but not too much. I don't like them. We used to cook them right here on the burner uh, or in a hot skillet, and it takes forever. Uh, and by the time you've got them blackened enough to where the skin comes off, the pepper is just like floppy and mushy. I like a little body left, a little life left in these uh, peppers. They're easier to stuff and they're easier to fry if they're holding their shape. I mean, either way is good, it still tastes good, but usually doing it this method with a blowtorch, it's so fast it doesn't actually cook the peppers uh, until you, know, you fry them. As soon as these are done steaming, a couple minutes, I'm gonna take them over here to the sink and I just run them underwater and just wipe the skin off. Kind of makes a mess, but that's been the easiest way I've found to deal with it. Uh, and then I'm gonna gut them and fill them with cheese. Usually I just grab a paper towel, get a little bit of water going on. And I just kind of scrub off the skin with a paper towel. There's a nice de-skinned, still has some, some heft to it. It's not mush. Perfect. Now that I have a plate of nicely skinned peppers, I mean, don't those look great? Like, nice and clean. Roasting them with a blowtorch and then sweating them off for a few minutes works great. All right, now I'm going to just make a slit, scoop the guts out, and then they're ready to stuff with cheese. So, I think I'm gonna get my oil warming up. And you, uh, you mind yeah. getting me uh, the breading ready? Hopefully, hopefully. Okay, you got the batter going on. Yep. So I do our usual cornmeal batter around here is equal parts flour, all purpose flour, and cornmeal. And then I just season it with salt and garlic powder and you know whatever else I feel like seasoning it with. Um, today I put some of our Creole seasoning in it. Mm. And then enough water to make a slightly thick batter. I'm probably gonna make it a little bit thinner than that. Yeah, a little, little bit thinner. Like a thin waffle batter. Yeah, you want it to kind of stick to the peppers, mm -hmm. but not be like chunky to where you lose the uh, the whole thing. The whole thing slips off. Yeah. yeah, and usually we'll dredge that in flour first. Yep, and then stick it in there. So for the cheese, I'm just doing uh, cheddar with a little bit of mozzarella. Um, we're not particular. Uh, we've tried it with uh, like farm cheese, fresh cheese, yeah. uh, queso fresco. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty good too. Monterey Jack's also pretty good. Yeah, Monterey, Monterey Jack's pretty good. But we don't have any Monterey Jack right now.
buggies. Mozzarella, cheddar, cheddar, mozzarella, cheddar, cheddar. The trick is being able to still close the thing. Do, 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 do. Dredge, dredge, dredge. Dredge, dredge, dredge. And into the platter. Come on, stick. Ooh, that is hot oil. Now basically all I'm doing now, I'm just going until it's golden brown. There's no meat or anything, so uh, we don't have to worry about cooking it until it's done. It's just cook it until it's as golden brown as you want. It's a little dark. That side's still good. That side's still good. Just let that finish darkening up. One. There's two. There's one more, but this is dinner right here. I'll throw that last one in here. And then we done. We ready. There's the chili riano, and we have some Mexican rice. All right. Let's eat. I figured I'd get a shot of what these look like so you don't have to use your imagination. Uh, usually we stuff them with like queso fresco so it's not so ooey gooey. But these are pretty good with ooey gooey cheese. Mm -hmm. Like these are quite delicious. Everybody enjoying their meal? Mm -hmm. Who has the spicy one? Nobody? Nobody yet. Mine is just a little bit spicy up towards the, where the seeds were. A little bit spicy. Was, the, was, bell that, was that bell pepper a little bit spicy? I could have got a little bit spicy from all the other like, ones. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Like, I know there was a spicy one. It's probably these two right here right. that are sitting here. Those right. are the two spicy ones. We all got lucky. It's the, uh, the Russian roulette that is eating peppers. Yeah. It's all right. These are delicious. Really good. Crust is delicious. Mm -hmm. Just need some refried beans and like I know. we're all, we're all good. Right. While I sit here and enjoy the rest of my meal, I think we're going to wrap it up right here. So we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.